Hi everyone, this is Sean Ismail from the Cloud Ranger and you're viewing the Microsoft Azure training. Today is the part five of Azure Websites and we are going to discuss Azure Websites custom domain and SSL. Uh, this is something that's once again, not only important for your exam, but these are the stuff you'll be doing in production relatively soon if you are going to deploy Azure Websites um, in Azure. Okay, so let's get started. So let's start with custom domains. What are custom domains and why we need them? I'm not going to get into details on what a domain is. I'm assuming that you guys already know what a custom domain is. Uh, let it be your organization name, like for example, Microsoft.com, Google.com, whatever. Those would be technically your custom domain names. So based on our previous conversations and uh, other sessions, you know that when you deploy an Azure website, what happens is it will have the name of the website dot azurewebsites.net. So azurewebsites.net is sort of the domain that Azure provides you to go to your website right away after it has been deployed or it has been created. In reality, this is not what you will be doing in your organization. I mean, if your organization is uh, your domain.com or .net, you don't want the users to go to some domain dot azurewebsites.net because azurewebsites.net does not identify you, right? The whole idea behind the domain is to make it personal. So Azure Website gives you the azurewebsites.net and this is not ideal for the production environment. So what you want to do is you want to tie your current domain if you already have one and you want to have the appropriate configurations done. So when people go to your domain name, uh, www.cloudranger.net, for example, they will come, they will have uh, my blog or my site based on my personal domain name. So there will be no indication of azurewebsites.net, even though it's hosted in Azure as an Azure website. Okay. So the way to do this is that obviously you need to have a domain. So if you do not have a domain, then go and purchase one. And um, if you are already working in an organization, chances are they already have the domain. So you won't need to go purchase one, right? But what will happen in the back end is to configure this is you go and associate your custom domain name with the public DNS where it will point to your Azure website. So these are stuff already that are quite permanent and quite widely used in production environment already on premise. This is no different, except that when you are now putting these DNS entries, there are specific ways to do it. And for more or less, the entire thing is almost similar to pointing to your on-premise server, but here you're pointing it to Azure's website. Okay. So I want to go through one example here is that the, how do you put these entries in the DNS, in the public DNS? So you can put the DNS entries for your custom domains on your public DNS in two ways. One is an A record, right? So what will, with an A record, what will happen is that the name that you will have for your domain will resolve to an IP address. And this is the IP address that Azure is going to provide you. It's going to say, hey, if you're going to put this A record in DNS, make sure it points to this IP address. And the domain needs to be verified. So Azure does not want you to go and point your domain to just any Azure website and just call it your own. So there are ways and which Azure is going to do. Uh, it's going to verify that if you are really the true owner of the domain before you point it, right? So it, the domain needs to be verified. It's quite simple though. So this is an example where you're going to mywebsite.net. Um, this is an A record. So you'll, so you'll say it's an A record. Uh, the domain name is mywebsite.net and this is a random IP address, but this IP address is going to be given to you by Azure when you actually create the site. So you have to note that and make sure you go put it in your DNS. And this is the verification. So you need a CNAME record. So these are all the separate DNS records, right? So it's a CNAME record, which you have to put something like this. So if you created a website called my website, this name has to match. All you have to do is enter this one in your DNS entry. So AW verify, do not have any typos in this one. It has to be the way it is. AW where it's like Azure website, by the way. So AW verify dot my website or whatever the name of the website you create 
www.azurewebsites.net. So before this A record works, this is something Azure is going to actually first try and verify. And you should be able to see that from the uh, Azure port portal uh, that you know it has verified that and it has found out that you actually you know own the domain before you can do something like that. Okay. So technically now when people go to mywebsite.net, they will be uh, you know, forward it to, or they'll be directed to the Azure website that you have created, which is, for example, mywebsite.azurewebsites.net. So they do not have to use web azurewebsites.net domain any longer. So it will look like it's your site, which it is, and your 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 organization, your customers or clients will see you as your domain name. So that was the error card of doing it. And ideally, this is what you want. Okay. And then there is the other way, which is a CNAME way. Um, it can be done without verification because you are basically just forwarding the domain. So it it maps to the, again, the same name at azurewebsites.net address. So all you have to do is go to your DNS and say, hey, I want to create a CNAME record. And there's no verification, so obviously you're not seeing the second C name over here. Um, you're just saying that this is my website, this is my custom domain name, and I just want it forwarded to my website dot Azure websites dot net. So this is the Azure website that's created. Okay, so it's quite simple. I'll go through an entire example today of how to do this in real life, uh, so you can follow through and do this in production. Now. Um, I know that the way we build the sessions is for you to somehow try to do all this yourself. This might be a little tricky for this session if you do not have already a domain. So I always had a test domain that I actually pay for every year. It's very cheap. It's no more than $12, $13 with most major providers. Uh, for $12 or $13, having your own custom domain, um, it serves a lot of purpose from a lab work, right? Because these are the lab works where you need something that's actually uh, there for you. So um, if you do not have a domain name registered or, you know, anything like that, then this is going to be a little hard for you to do. Um, but I'm going to go through an entire example for you to follow through for the people who are going to completely do this in a lab environment, have no access to a domain name, do not want to purchase one, do not work in an organization who already will give you a dev domain name to play with. Okay, so I'll go through one. Um, I'm not going to go to get into details on how to set up DNS and all that. That's not the scope of this. Uh, if you are working on premise, these are stuff you already should know. Um, Microsoft has a lot of certifications and everything where you should be, um, you know, quite familiar with how to set up DNS in public as well as in private. Okay. Um, the last important thing for exam as well as uh, production is that you have to understand that the application plans that we had, the web app plans, not all of them support this custom domain, okay? So uh, it's very important to know for your exams as well is that the free tier does not support custom domains. The free tier is free, okay? So they think that you should be happy with mywebsite.azurewebsites.net because you are, you're going for a free tier. You're not yet super serious or this is something that's not super important. It might be something personal, um, like a couple of pages you want to put up and you are okay with something like my my website or Azure websites .net. So the free tier is the only tier that does not have the custom domains. And I showed you how to look into those information to find out which tiers have uh, what options. And we'll go through that again. Um, but the shared tier, which is usually almost similar like free, free tier, but the shared tier, you can actually do this. Okay. And every other standard ones and premium ones, you can do this. So this is important uh, to remember because you might not have this option if you have a free tier. So let's go to the client machine and uh, let's get started. All right, so I'm in my uh, subscription and it's a little different today, okay? Because for this, uh, like I mentioned, for this, uh, this session, um, it has to simulate a lot of real life production stuff. So um, it, this is a still uh, something that I'm doing in my lab, but however, or a lab subscription or dev subscription, but it has like the certificates, it has DNS, domain name, everything that are almost simulating how, not almost simulating, it is like how production will be. So um, if you notice, this subscription is a little different from my usual one. This is actually shown at blueflux.org. 
on Microsoft.com. It's Blue Flux. It's a fictitious organization like, uh, you know, Contoso that Microsoft uses. I use Blue Flux for some serious labs where I'm actually going and doing something uh, that I'm going to do in production. So this is as close to production as it's ever going to be. And I'm not using the Cloud Ranger one because I do not have a certificate for Cloud Ranger, but for BlueFlux.net, that's the domain name. I actually do have SSL certificate that we are going to use um, in the next part of this session to actually demonstrate the SSL. Okay, so I'm going to use this subscription for today. Um, it's a basic subscription. Once again, um, it's pay as you go. Uh, as usual, there's nothing there in the subscription. Okay, browse everything in this portal. Nothing much going on here. Okay, and you are familiar with this um, preview portal quite a bit right now because that's what we have been using for our websites. And that's what we are going to do today as well. So let's go ahead and create a website first. That's what we want to first do. So you can follow along with me or you can already do that with an existing one if you have one or you know let's create one by now you should be quite familiar with how to do this so as your websites.net this is again we're building a basic website there's nothing too different about this from what we have already done before so we'll call this ranger website uh, ranger website 100 okay and we can see it's actually available. Ranger website 100. Uh, new plan. We'll just call it Ranger web plan. The pricing here, I'm going to get into de details on this one a little bit. But as you can see, it's a standard one. It's not a free one. Ranger East 2 resource group. I'm going to have mine in East. It's a pay-as-you-go account. I know that's the right subscription. East to region. I do not want to pin this to a dartboard. Let's go to the pricing tier. This is where I was talking about that you can actually see the details. So by default, it only shows the recommended ones on the top over here. You want to view all. And when I said the free one does not support this, this is the only one that's not going to support it. It's free. It does not cost you anything to run this per month. But you see, basically, it's a shared infrastructure, gives you a gig of storage. But that's about it. It doesn't give you anything more. Shared one is like the next step to the free one. It's very cheap. It's like 10 bucks a month for whatever we are doing to run right now. Um, but look at this. This is almost, these two almost falls in similar categories. They, they almost do not have, I mean, they almost have everything similar. They both cannot do much. But with the shared one, you can actually do custom domains. That's the one we want to see. So we are right now using the S1 standard. And obviously, this one can use the custom domain because, um, I mean, you can go into details over here. But you can actually see anything on top of this can use custom domains. It's pretty given that you are quite serious. If you are going to use 78 Canadian dollars a month for your website, um, you are quite serious. So, you know, they, 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 they are all okay with custom domains on this one. Um, as you go up to premium, obviously, everybody else has that. So the only one uh, you have to remember for your exam as well as uh, for um, production is that the free tier does not have it. Okay, no custom domains here. So we are using standard for most of the things, so we will be fine. So let's create this one. I will pause the video and be back once this is created and I can get to the site. Okay. Alrighty, looks like uh, the creation of the website was successful. Let's go to browse everything. And Ranger website 100 is created. Let's go in there. It's running. And this is the custom domain that Microsoft provides you, right? I mean, we have seen this before. It's the website name dot as your websites dot net. So let's click on that and we should see the website that's created. The web app has been created successfully. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty good. But this is exactly what we do not want. We want our custom domain. Uh, for example, in my um, uh, session today, it's going to be www.blueflux.net to actually go to this website. This is what I want to see. All right. So how do we do that? Let's go to all settings. It's under settings. And in here, you should see custom domain and SSL option. Okay. So let's go ahead, click on that. Now, it's important to see this. Microsoft actually does provide you an option to buy domains. And if you click on that, um, you see that uh, it's, I think it's, uh, it's hooked up with uh, GoDaddy, I think. Um, 
it gives you an option right away from in here to buy the domain if you do not have one. Um, I, I rather have my control. I'd rather shop around and find out from a lot of provider which one is providing a cheap domain name. You know, these days, if you're paying more than 10 or $12 for a domain name, you're already paying too much. I know there's a lot of places I can pay about eight Canadian or nine Canadian dollars to buy a domain name. In fact, if you buy a lot of hosting plan from a lot of places, they give you a domain name almost for free. But in here, we already, we don't need a hosting because we are doing this in Azure. So go get a cheap one from somewhere if you really have to have one. And you know what, in, if you're in IT, you are doing sysadmin work, sooner or later, you'll need a domain name because there's a lot of things that require a domain name, uh, especially if you're doing with public access and things like that, right? So uh, it's, it's a good investment to have for a very cheap amount. So I'm not gonna buy that today. What I want to show you over here is the managed domains. It, it, you know, right now I'm not buying any domains, so it's not over here. The important thing I want to show you over here is that host names assigned to site. So the only host name that's assigned to this site is the one that's provided by Microsoft, Ranger Website 100.azurewebsites.net. I do not have any certificates. There's no SSL binding. So the way you would actually map your custom domain to this is uh, let's go to bring external domains, bring external domains. So it's an external domain that you're going to bring in. So when you do this over here, what do you can see? You can see it's giving you a description of the custom domains, how you do this. But basically it's saying that this is what you have right now. If you wanted to use the first method we talked about, which was the A records, this is the IP address that you need to put in your DNS, public DNS. So sure, that's what we have to remember. So we have to say now, which external domain do we want to bring in? So I'll just say um, blueflux.net, for example. This is an external domain that I'm bringing in. Um, let's leave everything alone over here. Let's go click on save. It's an error. Let's look at the error. First to update bindings. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to save this anyways. And this is something I was expecting. So let's 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 look at this one. What is this saying? It's saying it the DNS record for blueflux.net that points to Ranger website 100.azure websites.net could not be located. If you want to configure a record, you must first create the CNAME record with your DNS provider. So basically this is saying that hey, for blueflux.net we do not have that verification process for you to point to this a to this IP address over here. So you are saying that you're going to bring in the blueflux.net, but it looks like you are not the owner of the blueflux.net domain because I have actually not gone in and put the DNS entries in the blueflux.net public DNS to say I am the owner by providing the AW or Azure websites verify.blueflux.net, which is fine. So I am not going to access my site with blueflux.net. So this is what I have. This is what ideally we would have to put in there. awverify.blueflux.net, CNAME, awverify, and you put the entire website's name over here. So this is what would actually verify that blueflux.net is the domain name that I own and Microsoft would actually allow you to do this, okay? The reason Microsoft is not allowing us to do this is because, uh, you know what, I have not gone and put in this DNS entry there. And then of course, you know, you can go and put the CDM and how you point this, or you could create an A record to do this. So the thing that I have done is that I said that I'm not going to access the website with blueflux.net. I'm going to access the website with www.blueflux.net, okay? Because that's where most people go. You would actually have both these options in production, but I'm just saying that I'm going to use www to do this. So the CNAME that I'm going to create for verification is going to be aw verify, okay? www.blueflux.net. I'm saying that this is what's this is how you're going to verify my entire domain name with www. And the way you are going to do that is that this is going to be a CNAME. Oops. This is going to be a CNAME. 
And I'm saying the way we are going to verify this is um, it's going to be aw verify dot ranger website 100 dot azure websites dot net. Okay, so that's my verification for this. And if I wanted to create the A record right now, this would be very simple because I would just go and put this IP address in my A record here. Right? So basically, I'll just go and create that A record. I'm thinking that, you know what, I'm going to use the CNAME because I'm going to just do this the easy way. And the way you would do that is very simple again. I'm going to say if somebody wants to come to www.blueflux.net, take them directly. So these are the only two entries I'm going to have in my public DNS for the domain name blueflux.net. Okay, so how does this work? I'm not going to do blueflux.net here. I'm going to do www.blueflux.net. Okay, let's see if this works out. .net. Press enter, and as you can see, there was a little check mark over there which said that this was fine. And the reason for being that is that I do actually have these two DNS entries already on my public DNS for blueflux.net. Now, depending on who is your DNS provider, if you add this while you're, I mean, if you're following through while you're doing this demo, it might not happen right away, okay? Because some DNS takes, oh, I don't know, four hours to propagate and make sure the DNS entry is there. So you might have to do that and leave it alone and make sure that, you know, it's it's working out. Um, you can always do an NS lookup and you can actually see how that works as well. I'm not going to get into details, but give yourself some time for the DNS to actually take this and absorb this. I do with a provider for DNS who actually does this in a couple of minutes, which is amazing. Uh, Microsoft recently announced already right now in 2015 is that they are going to also start providing the DNS for you. So they could be your DNS provider. They're already allowing you to buy that domain name and they are also going to be your DNS host. So you could be doing this in the Azure portal, uh, you know, and have the DNS hosted by Azure. So I'm not going to get into details because that's a little bit out of scope, but this is how you're going to put your DNS in there. Okay. So after that, you're just going to click on save and you wait for the notifications. Let's go across this because it's already saved. And as you can see, it already sort of picked up. So come back here. It sh you should see over here now www.blueflux.net show up here just because we have already imported this. So technically, if I go to this site right now, um, it should, and if, if the DNS has been updated and propagated, uh, you have the domain name and everything, you should actually exactly see this page. Okay, so let's do this. .net. All right, so as you can see, now my domain name completely resolves to this website. Okay, so that's what I am trying to show right now that people who are going to come to your site right now are not going to come over here and go to see Azure's website, they're going to see your stuff over here. So if you publish anything or anything on your push anything on your website, the content, uh, it's still going to be everything the same, but it's just that now they can come over here and visit the page with your domain name. And that's what ideally you want. Uh, let's see if we have everything over here. Yep. So the host name assigned to site is already there and that's all that is there to it for custom domains. Okay. Blueflux.net. Perfect. So if you're browsing the site, it will be forward slash whatever. So anyways, uh, that's all there is to the uh, custom domain. So let's now go to and discuss the next part of our series uh, where we are going to talk about the SSL the certificates that are coming to that, okay? So I'm actually going to leave this open because we are going to use the same site uh, for the demonstration. So let's go back to the slides. All right, let's talk about implementing SSL. So by now, you all probably know, because this is stuff that you do on premise as well, is that SSL is quite important to your websites or, you know, um, everything that we are going towards right now actually uses a certificate for encryption. And um, I'm not going to get into details on what a certificate can do for you. But 
basically, uh, in 2015, I'm noticing most of the search engines, Bing, Google, um, they all are sort of trying to promote sites which are actually already secure. So rather than HTTP, it seems like HTTPS is the way to go. And there's no reason you cannot have your uh, sites uh, uh, HTTPS or secure or um, implementing SSL because it's very cheap. I mean, it's no longer something beyond most organizations means. Uh, it has become much easier to implement in every aspect, even on IIS or any other web server you're using. In fact, most services, ADFS and all that, they are communicating over certificates and SSL in general. So um, chances are that if you're building a new website from the get-go, you probably want to use HTTPS and not just HTTP. And even if it's a static site, even if, um, well, it's rare to have a static site these days, but even if it's not doing any e-commerce, which HTTPS was most commonly uh, um, utilized for, um, so HTTPS or implementing SSL is important for Azure websites for similar reasons. The good thing is that out of the box, SSL support, SSL support is provided by default. And I'm to show you something interesting. We haven't looked into this, but if you are on the site, you are using HTTP, you can see you are already here, right? What it means by the support is there by default is that if you actually put HTTP S over here, and let's hit enter, you'll actually see that it's you are on a secure site. So by default, uh, HTTPS is provided for you. Unlike on AS, IIS, you'd have to go and have 443 port, do the binding, certificate and all that. It's already given. The only thing is that the certificate, obviously by default, is using AzureWebsites.net. So if you have a little padlock over here, if you click on that and go to View Certificates, you will see that there is a certificate that's used. It's a wildcard certificate with asterisks over here. You can see AzureWebsites.net. So this is provided to you by default. So what happens if we actually go to our custom domain and try that? I'm assuming that the support is going to be there as well. So let's go to uh, www.blueflux.net. As you can see, it's pointing to that one. If the binding is already in place, the HTTPS should work as well. Let's try that. Actually, it is working. I'll tell you why we ended up in this page in a bit, but let's continue to this website. And you can see that website showed up. We are still on HTTPS. The certificate, there's a certificate error and certificate um, mismatch error actually. And you can see the browser, the bar over here, address bar over here changes color to notify you, hey, something is up with the certificate. So let's look at what the problem with the certificate is. Well, the problem is that we are going to blueflux.net, but the certificate was issued to azurewebsites.net, right? So basically the browser is saying that, hey, you are going to some place which is using a certificate, but that does not match. So there, something is fishy here. So uh, you need to be careful in what you do because chances are somebody uh, legitimately, like, they might actually try to do this on purpose. Somebody's trying to hack you, gain your information. So the whole idea about certification, the certificating behind is authentication, authorization to understand that who you say is, uh, I mean, you are who you say you are, and that's verified by a third party. That's what certificates do. So this is the reason we are having this error because we are saying that we are going to go to bluefluxnet but we are actually going to somebody who's using azurewebsites.net. So the browser by default is supposed to warn you for that. So how do you solve that? Because in your organization, if you're going to use HTTPS, you want to use your certificate to do this. And that's what this session's next part or this part is all about, is that we are going to implement a certificate with already our custom domain in place. Okay, so let's go back to our slides. This is what I want to say. The first thing you need to do is you have to obtain an SSL certificate. Okay, and you can go to many other many providers. The, the, the people who actually provide you with the domain name might actually have SSL certificate option to sell, um, or you can go to one of those vendors who sell the SSL certificates, uh, certificate authorities who sell certificates, because this has got to be a public certificate. Um, in your organization, I know for a lot of lab work, you can actually do a self-signed certificate where you say that I know this certificate, but for our purpose over here, I'm going as close to production as possible. So I actually do have a certificate that I have bought a wildcard certificate for blueflux.net. Your organization chances are that they already have a wildcard certificate. 
or this is something that you might actually need to do to actually uh, follow along with this. Um, I'm trying to go into details. So you probably do not, if you, if you do not have, um, uh, you might actually need your own certificate and unlike domain names, certificates are not really cheap, especially if it's a wildcard certificate, cost you up to like, I don't know, the cheapest I saw was 300 bucks. So, but follow along with me, um, you'll be able to see what I do with the certificate. So it will be okay for your exams. And if you're following this for your production work, you'll be fine as well, okay? So when you go and buy a certificate, it will go and do verification to find out that, hey, it's we we know that you are who you say you are so they'll go through a verification process so even if you go and try to buy a certificate right now you might not get it right away depending on the kind of level of verification they go through but if you already have a certificate uh, export the certificate as a personal information exchange file or the extension pfx the reason being that the pfx will actually have the private key of the certificate integrated in there okay and you know the pki public key infrastructure this is all the certificate stuffs are about i mean if you uh, are not already familiar with this please go ahead and get to a search engine go through a tutorial to find out how this entire certificate works but that's something you have to learn very very soon and i'm expecting that you already know that so anyways download your certificate with a pfx extension to ensure that it actually has the private key and while you are actually ordering this certificate or whatever you have to make sure it's a 2048 bit encryption because Azure only supports 2048 bit encryption, not 1024 anymore. Uh, because computers are getting powerful, the encryptions need to be stronger, and that's why by default Azure out of the box wants a 2048 bit encryption. So you have to make sure a certificate is that. After you have the certificate, this certificate needs to be uploaded to Azure, obviously, because you know what? Azure needs to have your certificate to actually bind it. And just like IIS, you bring uploading to Azure means you're bringing basically the certificate on the IIS server, and then you have to do that binding, and the binding will be done on the website. So no more talk here. I'm going to, I already have a certificate downloaded in PFX format for blueflux.net. That's why I was using my subscription today because I, and this domain name, because I already have a certificate, so I will be able to show you this as closely as possible to the real production work, okay? So let's go to my system. And we are going to go back here and you can see under the custom domains and SSL right now, there is no, um, there is no certificates. It actually tells you, you have no certificates, upload a certificate to get started and there's no binding as well. So let's go ahead and upload a certificate and you can see the option to do that is right over here. And it's all under again, custom domains and SSL. Okay. So let's upload a certificate. And it's a PFX certificate file. You have to absolutely make sure that it's not a cert file or anything like that. It's a PFX, which actually has your private key in there. So let's select a file. It's going to make, make us browse. And I have a certificate called blue2.pfx. I'm going to take that file. And you can see that once you did that, it uploaded that file over here. So when you download this certificate, usually it will ask you for a local password to just make sure that nobody can just get hold of your certificate and start using it. So I did have a password that I set up. It could be any password that you set up for your protection. And as you can see, it did a checkmark over here. So the password matched and I'm going to do a save. Okay, so it's, it's successfully uploaded. Even after I click on the save, sometimes it acts a little weird. It says that, you know, unsaved will be discarded, but I know it has been saved. Anyways, so now it ended up putting two of them here because I just ended up saving that twice. Anyways, we're going to just use one. And you can see from here that this is an asterisk certificate, um, blueflux.net. It's the wildcard. Um, it's going to expire soon. And that's all we really need. And your certificate is already there. So we're going to do a binding right now. And the way you do the binding, it's just like IIS binding. We are basically saying that bind this one, this, this is the name. And this name showed up because, you know, we already have the domain over here. So that's how it showed up. Uh, it's asking us which certificate do you want? I know this is the same certificate. I ended up clicking save twice. So it showed up twice. I'll just pick any one you want. And just like SS, uh, SNI, I mean, just like SSL type on IIS, it's giving me two options. Does, is this an IP-based SSL or it's an SNI server name indicator? I say, I'll, I'm going to go with SNI SSL. And all I have to do is click on save. 
and it's very carefully letting you know that having doing this will actually have a pricing impact because it Microsoft will charge you a little bit for your SSL and the binding uh, of an SSL certificate to your um, to your website directly. So we are done with the binding, as you can see, www. It's saying that it has a certificate and the type is SS, uh, SNI SSL. So since that's done, let's go to, we don't need this one. Let's go to our blueflux.net. This is where we were getting the certificate error. As you can see, the certificate error was because it was pointing to Azure websites.net. So let's go ahead and refresh this page. And as you can see, the certificate error has disappeared. Let's go to the padlock, view certificates. And now you can see that star, the wildcard certificate has been issued to this site and um, it's issued to the same domain name that we have. And since this match right now, the HTTPS is perfectly working, okay? This is how you just associate an SSL certificate to your website. So you're perfectly fine uh, when your users or in users or clients, they come into your website, they'll know that you are who you say you are, they can trust you and, um, you know, and they know that their communication is happening over SSL. So it's going to be secure. And that's all there is to this. And over here, as you can see, um, the binding is done over here with the server name indicator. Uh, similar to IIS, again, you know, this is just in a different way it's presented, but it's, it's all the same way of doing things, okay? So um, I guess that's all that is there to this uh, uh, scenario. Um, and let me come over here. As you can see, you can come HTTP or you can come HTTPS and people will be and you'll be fine, okay? <clears throat> the only thing I can think of, actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. The only thing I can think of is that how are you going to have to force your users to uh, HTTPS? So for example, if I can go HTTP, uh, if the search engine picked this up as HTTP, what's going to happen? How am I going to go to HTTPS? Uh, this is probably a common question a lot of admins have, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you started thinking of different ways of doing this because it's something that's, it's a legit concern that, hey, if my users end up going HTTP, um, how am I going to prevent them to go to HTTP and make sure their HTTPS to always be secure? Well, one way is to take off the complete HTTP binding on IIS. I mean, I used to do that. Take off the HTTP binding and, you know, if they come to HTTP, it's going to be an error. So they know it has to be HTTPS or there's, a, there's an issue with the URL, they'll fix it. Or you can have redirects. You can have some sort of a redirect that says that, hey, you know what, if you're going to come to HTTP, um, there's going to be a page which will redirect you to HTTPS or you can do something with web config. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna set up something really quick and I'm gonna show you as a bonus. Uh, it's this not gonna be part of your exam or anything, but for production, this is amazingly helpful. So I'm gonna do something of the web config file when I'm deploying a site and I'm gonna show you how to do this, all right? So just give me a moment here. All right, so I have everything ready. Uh, let's deploy a site and the way we are gonna deploy this with the Visual Studio. So let's fire up Visual Studio real quick. And I'm gonna create a new website and blank website let's call it I don't know what did we call our website um, you could give any name really but I just want to make sure that I'm giving uh, I, I just like keeping it consistent so we'll just call it Ranger website 100 okay it's an empty website As you can see, when you create the website, it already creates the web config file, okay? So I'm going to get to the web config file later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a, add a page, um, the index file, existing item, uh, not existing item. Why did I do that? Let's come over here. Let's go to add new item. And I'm going to say I'm going to put an HTML file. I'm going to call this default.html, okay? Let's do default and HTML. There should be two pages here. Hello, this is a secure site. Perfect. Let's see how this looks internally. I always like doing that to see, okay, hello, this is a secure site. Let's close that browser. So we are going to publish this site right now. The way we do that is I'm going to go over here, publish a website, uh, Azure Websites. I'm actually connected to my new subscription. You're going to be connected to your one. Existing websites at Ranger Web 100. 
this is stuff you already know validate connection they should all be fine the publish method is going to be a web deploy I'm hoping this is going to be working out fine as well so I'm not making the change right now I'm just going through the publishing the website right now to make sure that uh, make sure that the site is published okay so let's do publish okay let's refresh this page say hello this is secure site I do not want this URL so let's go back to my URL if I press refresh here perfect it's come to HTTP but this is my site if I go to HTTPS oops and I go hit on refresh on HTTPS I'm getting a secure site as well but look this is the problem if people actually go to HTTP they're still going to the same site and it says hello this is a secure site well this is not a secure site I want to push them or force them to actually end up going to HTTPS so how do I do that let's come over here I'm going to make a change to the config file okay I'm going to add something so in the config file and this is a copy paste stuff that I'm going to do um, because I don't want I don't have the time to actually type this entire thing feel free to pause the video and uh, I don't know try to copy this off for yourself because it will definitely help you in the future so let's come over here I'm going to add new nodes let's paste this so what I'm basically doing over here is I'm I'm, I'm putting the system.web server tag uh, and I'm basically saying that I want a URL rewrite uh, some of you might actually totally look at this and be like I know exactly what's going on and if you do not completely understand that that's okay as well all I'm saying here is do a rewrite if somebody comes to HTTP redirect them to HTTPS okay so let's save all of this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this site again with the new data okay with the new web config file um, I'm going to just you know do a publish website start preview web config file is the only file that actually had a change because you know the HTML file is perfectly fine there's no change to that so it's going to update the web config file so the way it will do that is it will re-upload that and I don't want this I come over here everything else is going to be same because the main page is fine okay so let's close this tab if we have done this correctly if I go to HTTP and I go to www.blueflux.net what's going to happen this HTTP will actually get redirected to HTTPS and it will force me to always go to HTTPS to ensure that it is uh, always on a secure channel okay so let's refresh that now let's try HTTP actually you know what should have refreshed that earlier let's that's making my demo look weird so let's do www.blueflux.net did you see that it actually converted it to HTTPS let's try that again actually you know what I'm going to go and delete all my caches and everything browsing history and all that so there's nothing in there this will make it realistic so I don't have to so HTTP um, www obviously there's no cache here okay blueflux.net actually no it did not take the entire cache out I probably missed something here uh, history yes history history was not deleted I do not want that URL to show up at all by itself HTTP no HTTPS www blue see blue flux will not show up perfect but there's no history look at this notice this HTTP okay when I hit enter it will actually be forced to go to HTTPS there you go it actually did a redirect and you are rewrite through that is that if anybody comes with HTTP it will actually be forced I mean the person will go be forced to go to HTTPS always ensuring that anything that's done on your website is going to be encrypted so this is probably the easiest way to do the redirect through the web config there's a lot of on IIS these days there's that URL rewrite module and all that um, I just think that this little piece of code that goes in to the uh, web config file is the best way to do it at least so any file or anything that you have right now 
doesn't matter where you go. If you have an HTTP link, it will be converted to HTTPS. So this is just as a bonus for production work. Um, this piece of code you'll need, definitely. Um, what you need to do is just put that in your web.config file and you should be good to go. Um, this is not going to be part of your exam. I highly doubt it, uh, but it's definitely something that's required for production work. Okay, cool. As a bonus. So back to our slides, short session. Um, we we talked about the Azure website custom domain, how Azure websites.net is always there as the domain. So you want your custom domain to actually point to your Azure websites in production the way I did it with bluefluxnet You have to ensure that you actually have a domain name to start with. Um, you have to make sure the domain is actually hosted on a public DNS. A um, lot of uh, free places to do this. Azure has their own DNS hosting right now. You can do it there or the person you are or the, or the organization you're buying the domain from might actually provide provide you the DNS hosting for your website. Uh, you, there are two ways, the A records and the CNAME, and you have to do a verification to show that you are the domain owner before you actually attach this to your Azure website. So, so you have to make sure the verify uh, CNAME is there in place and you wait long enough for that to resolve and make sure it propagates, right? So those are the things you need for the domain to have. And once that's done, you go basically and say, bring an external domain and you add that and you should be okay with a custom domain pointing to your Azure website. Then we talk about the SSL, how to implement SSL or secure uh, browsing through HTTPS by uh, utilizing a certificate. Um, you will have to have a certificate. You could have a certificate, which is a cheap one. Um, I have a wildcard certificate because I use this for a lot of things. Um, your organization might have wildcard certificate as well already. And if they don't, you can use any other certificate. You just have to make sure that the name, the domain name and that matches and you should be okay. Um, and we showed how to go and do the certificate, uh, import the certificate and attach it or bind it to your uh, Azure website. The other thing I discussed about is that by default, the HTTPS support is already there. So HTTP, HTTPS, those URLs are both available. So when you do a custom domain, obviously the Azure website certificate does not match. So you get an error. So you need your personal certificate. And that's what exactly we did in this demo. The other bonus feature that I did in this video is that uh, you want your users, even if they have both HTTP and HTTPS, since you have HTTPS, you want people forced to be, uh, you know, using the secure channels or, you know, uh, go to your secure site, which is using SSL. And that's what we did. I had a little piece of code that I put in the web config file while publishing. I put it in there to ensure that if somebody goes to HTTP, they'll, the URL will be rewritten and redirected to HTTPS. Anyway, so that's all there was to this session. Um, as usual, the training site is at www.cloudranger.net forward slash Azure that dash training. YouTube is forward slash Cloud Ranger Network. Twitter is at Cloud Ranger blog. Email me if you have any questions at sean at cloudranger.net or just, you know, put every questions in the comments so everybody else can see. And I can see a lot of people are already doing that and answering their question. I'm pretty sure a lot of other people get a lot of benefit from uh, that as well. All right. Thank you for viewing and I will be seeing you in the next session.